everything that have breath, praise the name of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in old taste and see that the Lord is good. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God bless you. And this is the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Willie Wells, Jr., the pastor of the church. We welcome those who are in person. Glory.
stop clapping too soon. Give God praise. Amen. Reading. Turn your mic on. Third chapter. Turn your mic on. Scripture reading coming from the uh, third chapter of Romans, uh, 27 to 31, coming from the NIV Bible. Okay. And it reads, Well, then, is boasting, is this excluded? Because of what law? The law that requires work? No. Because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or uh, is it God, the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of the Gentiles too. Since there's only one God who would justify circumcised by the faith of the uncircumcised do the same faith do we then not the father law by his faith not at all brother we uphold the law God have a blessing to the reading of the Lord. let us all bow for a word of prayer and as I pray you pray also. Heavenly Father, we come once again just thanking you for allowing us to come into your house of worship. We thank you, Father, for being God and God alone. You have done so many things for us, Father. You have given us your grace, your mercy, and your love, Father, and we, we do not deserve it. But we come now, dear Heavenly Father, with bowed heads and a humble heart, Father asking that you please forgive us of the sins we've committed against you. Some in thought, some in word, some in deed. We've left some things undone, Father, that you have told us to do, and we come now asking for forgiveness. And we find confidence, Father, for you tell us in your word if we would just confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father. And we come now laying ourselves bare, asking that you please forgive us. We seek to be in the right fellowship with you, Lord, that we may be able to give you the praise and worship you do today, Father. We come now acknowledging, dear Heavenly Father, that it is about you and you alone. You have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, knowing that we were stuck in our trespasses and sins, and we are eternally grateful, Lord. We come now, Father, asking that you touch our pleasant role family as a whole, Father. So many different struggles, Father. We know that you are able. We come now, ask the Father that you touch those that are struggling in their bodies. We ask Father that you allow your healing hand to rest upon them in a mighty way. We know, Father, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are a healer. And we ask Father that you do a miraculous work today, Father. We come now, ask the Father that you touch our families, knowing that they are struggling. We come now, ask the Father that you touch that man, that woman those children, dear Heavenly Father. Those that have given their life to you, Father, we ask that you allow them, dear Heavenly Father, to live a life, dear Heavenly Father, that's pleasing to you, always seeking to do your will, letting this sin seek world know where they stand, that they stand with you, Lord, understanding, Father, that you are the author and finisher of our faith. We seek to do your, your will in our lives, Father. We come now, Father, just asking that you touch those that are struggling in their finances. We ask the Heavenly Father that you allow them to feel your increase, Father. And as they do so, Father, we ask that you allow them, dear Heavenly Father, to show their heart that they should have for you, Lord. We come now, Father, lifting up our country. We're lifting up our leadership. Understanding, Father, they are struggling. But we know, Father, if they just trust and believe in you, Father, everything will be all right. We come now lifting up our local leaders here in Fairfield, Father. For long we have proclaimed the renaissance in Fairfield, Father. We know it must begin with you. Allow us, dear Heavenly Father, that have a heart for you, dear Heavenly Father, to show a heart for people. We come now just asking that you just revitalize this Fairfield community in a 
in a mighty way, Father. Touch the hearts and minds of those in this community, Father. Touch this church in a powerful way that it may be able to impact this community in a way that's pleasing to you, Lord. We come now, Father, just lifting up our nation as a whole. All the violence going on, Father. All the troubles that are around, Father. We know that the answer is your son, Jesus Christ. And we're given the opportunity in our day-to-day -day walk allows us to say something to him, Father, that lift up the name of Jesus, Father. We come now asking that you just continue to touch our pastor, touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father. Whatever struggles he may be dealing with, Father, we ask that you just touch him in a mighty way. We come now lifting up the wells and the queen family, Father, asking that you touch them in their time of bereavement, Father that they're struggling, Father, we know that you have the peace that they need. And we come now asking that you give them a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. But we come now, Father, just thanking you most of all. Thanking you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice he made on the cross for us, Father. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, dear Heavenly Father, that helped guide us through this crazy world. We just thank you, Father, for all that you do. These are so many other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us continue in worship by lifting our voices, singing praises to the God that deserves all praise and worship. Amen. Amen.
pray without ceasing, and in all circumstances, give thanks. We wish you a happy and blessed week, and uh, most importantly, a safe week. Stay safe out there. Thank you, and God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all feel okay today? All right. Well, I'm going to ask that you will now pray for me as I try to minister this song to you all. Um, <clears throat> just, just, I'm just going to sing. <laughs> Will be, and will this be enough? 
the words, but I just wanted to say that. So tonight, I'm going to close my eyes and realize there's no reason to cry. all day so tonight when I'm laying in my bed on 1956 Pine Street thinking about everything that I gotta do tomorrow so tonight close your eyes there's no more need to healing. I still believe that God is able. He's Jehovah Rapha. Yes. And when nobody else won't praise him with you, he's Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. They don't 
see us, they see him. That's who he is. And we're privileged this morning to be his children. And if you're not a child of God, the promise is that if you call on his name, no matter how long you've been out there and what you've been involved with, if you just call his name, I declare to you that he'll save you right in the midst of yourself. He'll pick you up and turn you around, put you on a street that is straight. And when life kick at you after now that you've been saved, no weapon that is formed against you can prosper. And whatever the enemy will try to cause to mean for your bad, God will bring good out of it. I'm a living witness. Can I get a witness? It's God. On Friday of last week, um, my sister-in-law, Letha Pearl Wells, that's my deceased brother George's wife, 74 years of age, uh, had a heart attack. Now she's with the Lord. About uh, six years ago, my brother passed, and, and now here it is, six years removed. And now his wife has joined him in eternal bliss. As a funeral service that is prepared, and um, it's kind of incomplete, but it looks like it's going to be Saturday at uh, 11 o'clock at the... Um, my Dollar Missionary Baptist Church there in Kingston. I want you to be praying for two families. One is the Wells family, and then the McQueen family. My sister-in-law, Pearl, uh, was a McQueen before she was a Wells. And um, so I want you to be lifting them up. There's always opportunities for us to, to be always mindful of that death is, um, it's always moving, but death is moving under the direction of Almighty God. It is Jehovah who decides when it's time for us to come into his presence. And so, uh, even though it's morbid in some ways, but it is part of life that we came here not to be always, but we're pilgrims and we're traveling. But while we are here, let us always be mindful of the fact that we have a Savior and he's already walked the streets that we will walk in. Whatever you are going through, whatever you are experiencing, he's able. Can I get a witness? I want to thank, amen, amen. Listen, last week, uh, my wife and I, we experienced 42 years of being together and uh, uh, thank God that God is a protector when the bullets was flying and we were shooting at each other and we never hit one another. And uh, 42 years, that's a joke, y'all. Don't get too into yourself. That's a joke. Uh, but uh, 42 years uh, that we've been together and uh, as husband and wife and uh, six or seven years before we got married. And I want to thank the well-wishers who uh, did things for us sent us text and then some sent financial blessings and we're excited about that and I thank God that we have a uh, first lady who is uh, first of all in love with the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, loves her husband and is a great example of what a, a wife ought to be that virtuous woman when you look at my wife then you will see that I don't know what she'll say about me I'm still trying to get it right <laughs> but uh, thank God for our union and as a result of that we have two uh, bustling boys and that uh, God has given to us in that union and they have married wives that are similar to their mother and that's what it's supposed to be like so continue to be encouraged and we are encouraged by you how many of you ready for some preaching Amen. <laughs> Need some preaching. If anything today, 
that we need. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, and I'm so excited about that. Let me call your attention uh, to uh, this particular passage that we dealt with a little bit. Um, we're in preaching through the book of Romans. It's actually a letter that Paul sends to Rome, and uh, in the third chapter, uh, there's one particular verse uh, that I want us to call our attention to, and that is in verse 27 of, uh, that is chapter 3. And so if you will stand to show reverence uh, to the word of God and watch what God does here uh, today for whatever you are experiencing in life, God has already given the answer. He's already rendered the solution. And so as we come today, the NIV, there will be some scriptures that will be noted uh, from the King James for the uh, massive part of uh, our, our preaching moments. Uh, we'll be referencing to uh, the NIV, that's the New International Version of the scriptures. In verse 27 of chapter 3, these are the words, where then is boasting it is excluded on what principle on that of observing the law no but on that of faith your eyes are closed that's enough let's pray father thank you for this word thank you god for this privilege time Thank you, God, for this marvelous occasion. Thank you, Father, for another day's journey. You got our attention. You brought us into this place. You huddled us together on these creature comfort electronics. Now, Lord, feed us until we can handle no more. Watch over us, control our emotion. Rain down that manner that would set our souls ablaze. That when this sermon has been finished on this side, that we'll leave out of here leaping with joy, knowing there's hope. As we move towards hope, God, have your way today. This we ask in the matchless, most perfect and profound name of Jesus. In his name we pray, shout with me, amen, amen, and amen. And before you take your seat, tell your neighbor, our pastor today, yeah, he's, he's preaching through a letter that was sent to Rome to the church in Rome to dismantle some inerrancy. Somebody said, what is inerrancy? Keep on listening. So that the church could flourish in the truths of Almighty God. Neighbor, pastor today, I'm going to preach from this subject braggadocious said to him again braggadocious one more time amen you may be seated in the presence of almighty God to our preachers who are here today and to our officer who is here today and to all of you God's children that are in person today and those uh, that are only airwaves my neighbor last week um, she's kind of like we walk um, in the neighborhood together and she's um, uh, trying to become a horticulturist uh, and uh, she's uh, busy about trying to keep her yard green and and uh, she's perhaps uh, listening this morning watching and we've invited uh, her to to watch us on on live and and I say that uh, after two and a half years when we first was giving a curfew to leave, uh, not to come to the church because of the COVID, uh, we not only 
uh, made uh, attempts to do God's will and not be shut down because of events. Uh, but we uh, have gained friends, and, and though um, some of our members have not returned to in-person worship uh, for whatever reason, but there are many who have come alongside of us uh, that are from other parts of the city and other parts of the nation uh, that are viewing us and what we didn't do at one time, we didn't have uh, the uh, necessities or we didn't have the push we needed to have uh, to get on uh, online, to get on the internet. And, and even though there are many folks lost their lives and death had occurred because of the COVID, uh, but what it did for us also, it helped to catapult us uh, to take ministry uh, to the airwaves, and we're thankful for that. So we just, uh, we're blessed as a church here in an area that seems to be impoverished, but we are blessed to be here at 401 52nd Street here in Fairfield, uh, not just to be a whatnot, uh, but to be an active agent uh, for him who does all things well. And so as we come, we do appreciate all your prayers and and solicit uh, really that you continue to pray uh, for our church and for the ministry that God has placed us in. Braggadocious. And Paul is, is really in a locked position, but he is still concerned about the folks on the other side. Uh, can I tell you that all of us have experienced and will experience moments of difficulties from time to time. Uh, we will go through our ups and our downs, and sometimes it may be more downs than up, uh, but we're not left alone. We have a Savior who has already walked the pathways that we may be walking. There are some things that we have never experienced that he's already experienced, and he has already fought the battle, and the victory has been won. Uh, sometimes we don't understand because of where we are spiritually, but God is not scratching his head uh, with question marks hollering around him trying to figure out what's going on. No, he knows what's going on, and he's already made ways for us. Sometimes we can't sense it, can't track him, and we can't trace him. But he's already made a way. Whatever you are going through, God has already given a solution for it. And whatever you've been through, it was God's grace and mercy that brought you from it and through it. And, and whenever things try to go awry in your life, the one who is greater I am is larger than any circumstance, bigger than any problem, can jump any hurdle, is able to do anything but fail. He's God, and we have him as our Savior, as our Lord. Paul is concerned about uh, some misnomers. He's a little bit uh, apprehensive in his spirit, having the desire, anxious too, to get to Rome. There's a church that's been set up there and is exploding. People are uniting. People are getting saved. And as people are getting saved, there are those on the outside that are trying to come in to correct or change that which God has set up, and they're bringing in false witnesses, and they're bringing about false teaching. And they are concerned because, Paul is concerned because those that are babes in Christ, if he can't get to them to encourage them to stay on the main road, and that is Jesus Christ that there will be those who will try to discourage them and change them from the way. So Paul is writing a letter. He could be having a pity party to himself because of where he is housed. Yeah, he's in a, he's in a prison. 
And he's there not because he did something wrong uh, legalistically. He's there because of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's preaching to some dead Wheel in the middle of the wheel as the bright and morning star, as the glorious one of eternity and now as the, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, as the only true wise God, our Father, as the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus is not part of of your religion, then your religion is dead. Because if Jesus is not in part, a part of who you are, then you are dead. Be just like Green Mom, um, dead men walking, living but yet dead. Not understanding that salvation is, is wrought for not just certain of folks, but for everybody. And the only way that we can have eternal salvation is through Jesus Christ our Lord. These folk that Paul is, is dealing with to kind of culturally divide them from the movement of the way which is correct. My brothers and sisters, as I think about this thing uh, called braggadocious, we all know about it. Uh, a certain dog had always boasted of his ability as a runner. Somebody said, that's a problem already right there. When dogs started to talk. Just for an illustration, let me go further, okay? This dog is talking about how he runs faster than any other dog, cat, or animal that has been created. That he can slow down or he can use saying boat when he desires. On one particular occasion, he got behind, running behind a rabbit. And the rabbit seemed to have outsmarted him 
because of the speed that he did not understand that the rabbit had inside of him. Can I tell somebody before I finish this illustration that greater is he that is in me. And you ought to make that your testimony that's in me than he that's in the world. Yeah, a lot of times we understand that the race <laughs> is not given to the swift always, but to them that endure. This dog is running behind this rabbit, and this rabbit escapes him because his speed of the rabbit is much greater than that of the braggadocious dog. And braggadocious dogs always try to uphold their braggadocious ism. Don't look it up in the thesaurus. It ain't there. I just made it up. And he says, the reason why the rabbit outran me, because the rabbit was running for his life. I was just running for a dinner. Braggadocious is an adjective used to describe a person who is boastful of something that involves a lot of bragging. Uh -uh. Brag and boast means just about the same thing, to speak in oneself and one's accomplishments with excessive pride. That's it. That's a problem. Pride goes before uh, destruction, haughtiness before what? A fall. But when we think about the word braggadocious, it's usually applied in a negative connotation or sense. An example in a, in a, in a sentence is, Jimmy's frequent braggadocious display left him without many friends since everyone got tired of listening to his constant self-pride. No man can boast of himself or herself uh, before God. No man can boast in his or her own righteousness, goodness, merit, or even virtue. What it is that keeps man from boasting and glorying in himself. What is it? It tends to be kind of puzzling when you think about it. Think about it. All of the advancement that man has made. God created us lower than the angels to have fellowship with them. And, and made in his image, not that we are deified, but made in his image that we can create some things, but we can't do it like him. God took nothing and made everything. We have to take what he's already made and then bring about something. With all the accomplishments of man, sometimes if we're not careful, Romans, the third chapter, is dealing with the opportunity to let folks know that you may have greatness. You may be intellectual. There may be those who have great imaginations and have great dreams and inspire to carry them out. But you can't even wake yourself up. If God don't touch you with the finger of love, can I shout amen by myself? Man sometimes lose his variance or he lose his mind or he becomes somewhat occupied or preoccupied with his own beautifulness. Yeah, but when I think about man and what he does, the scientific and technological advancement that he has made. Man, we got airplanes that are flying. We got trains that are, that are soaring at speeds of light. Man, look what, look what God has allowed uh, the human race uh, to, to come up with. And if we're not careful, we'll think that we did that on our own. What keeps us from becoming lifted on ourselves with all of these technological uh, accomplishments that we've made? 
Not only that, but when we think about the medical and health advancements that we have uh, have, a, have moved towards, and even when this COVID came out, doctors got together, those in medicine got together and came up with an antidote to try to preclude that thing called COVID. And many of us have gotten the, the shots and we gotten the boosters and getting the boosters to the booster. And when they come out for a booster to the booster to the booster, we got when God used minds that are fickle, minds that are finite and use them to do great things. And if we're not careful, we will rest on that and become braggadocious on the fact that we got some doctors and nurses that can do like none other. When we think about the commercial and farming advancement that we have, man, look how, look how life just has exploded when our foreparents that was picking cottons in that day and when those that are now farmers that sometimes don't have the, the rain cooperating with them, but there are devices that have, they've come up with to water their plants so that we can have what we need to continue to live. And if we're not careful, we'll rest on that premise and think that can't nobody do it like us. And when we think about the comfort and recreational advancements that have been strides that we've, we've come up with. Look at all of the athleticism of people. When we think about people like Usain Bolt, we think about Michael the Jordans of life, and when we think about those who are all of all the different uh, 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 places that we use when it comes to sports arenas, how people have all those things. But it's amazing when we think about how all of these basketball players and football players, but but there's something that their greatness cannot do for them to sustain them, because it all it takes is one hit or tackle, one falling from a, a beam, one that running down a coast shooting a basketball and then fall, come down wrong on your foot and it'll shut you down. Don't get caught up on your accomplishments. Braggadocious folks ought not be in the body of Christ when we look at braggadocious uh, from a negative sense. According to Paul, in these verses, the new man knows that he isn't saved by keeping the law. And let me tell you, I don't, I'm not telling you that the, the Old Testament is outdated. No, the Old Testament was designed, especially the law, it was designed not to give salvation to man. It was designed, y'all listening? It was, I said, you're listening? It was designed to show man that he was a sinner. And there is a savior. That's what the law really was brought all about to show man that all of his accomplishments would just be null and void without the presence of Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrificial lamb. We say not by the law, but we're saved by faith. Therefore, there is nothing about which we can boast in the matter of his salvation. Instead, let me rock you a little bit. A man taking the credit for something which he had nothing to do. All glory, all honor must be given to the Lord. Amen. He knows that the law was just a tool, I said earlier, used by the Lord to bring that man, we, unto himself. God. He isn't trying to please God. He, he knows that God is already pleased by what his son Jesus has done. He isn't trying to even point to, to, to even point with God and, and place, we call this him like tick for tat. No, he recognized that even when I done my best, my best is not good enough when it comes to obtaining salvation. My salvation is not won because I dress nicely. 
My salvation is not given to me because I attend church every Sunday. My salvation is not even given to me because I work in ministry. My salvation has been afforded me on what Jesus Christ had to go through the terribleness of being struggled, struck down, spit on, slapped, abused. My salvation comes as a result of the perfect lamb of God that came down 42 generations. And the Bible said that he was led from judgment hall to judgment hall. Y'all ain't talking to me. Judgment hall to judgment hall. And on Friday, they lifted him high, stretched him out wide, dropped him low, and he died. And the story would have been a moot point had not he rolled risen the third day morning. And anybody glad that all that we do, all the good preaching that we do, all the great living we do, but it cannot sustain that what Jesus has done for us, only what Christ has done will last. He has passed from the state of salvation man having to do with the do's and realize that it is done. Boy, we, here's the revolutionary thing for Christians that ought to release you from the bondage that Satan tries to incorporate within us. That no matter how long we live, no matter how many accomplishments we make, all of our goodness is like filter rags. But here's the good news of the gospel. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. The good news is that even when I fall short, and I do it a lot of times, I don't cuss as much as I used to, but even when I make a mistake, Jesus Christ the son of the living God has done everything perfectly well. And when I lean on him, Tim, when I lean on him, Donnell, when I lean on him, Carol, church, when I lean on him, even in my frailties, even when I'm messing up, even when my thoughts are not right, I'm so glad that everything about Christ is perfect. Amen. And so when I think about what we're trying to do, braggadocious, there are three things that I want to give you to help us to realize. Now, that's some braggadociousness that can happen, but there's, we'll talk about that a little later. The first thing I want you to know is the prohibition to bragging. All of us got that braggingness in us. Yeah. But there's some prohibition circle that with a slash between it that as a Christian, you ought not to be bragging about. Let me talk to you about it. Bragging about the wrong, right things in a, is an indicator towards maturity and growth. And I say that again, and I wrote it down for you. So bragging about the right things is an indicator towards maturity and growth. All right? Now notice, bragging about the wrong things creates momentum. Lord have mercy. Underline and highlight it. Towards hardship and being humble. So with that instance in, in, in mind, let's, let's look at that again because bragging about the right thing is an indicator that you are growing spiritually. And people that are growing spiritually, when they come through what they're going through, and all of us, how many of y'all can raise your hand and say, I've been through some things. Oh, I've been through, I've been through the rain, I've been up and down, but, but I made it, but I didn't make it. On my own, I made it because he made it. Listen, when, when we look at this, put it back there again one more time. When we look at this definition, bragging about the right things as an indicator towards maturity and growth, 
But also on the negative side, bragging about the wrong things create momentum towards the hardship and being humble. What you mean by that, preacher? This is what I mean. When you are bragging about what you've done, how you got saved, how you saved yourself, how you keeping yourself saved, how you don't do like them folks, you do like that Pharisee that was praying that prayer, Lord, thank you that I ain't like them other folks. When you get there, you open up a door for the devil to come in and put stuff on you. How many of you know when the devil bless you, it is going to be grievous? Talk to me this morning. When the devil, y'all do know he know how to bless, don't you? Now, not everything, every good and perfect gift come from the Lord. But not everything gift that we might get come from the Lord. It might be from the devil. And when the devil bless you, it's to hurt you because his motivation is to steal, kill, and destroy and when you get braggadocious, you open up that channel uh, about what you've done. Be careful bragging on your children. Be careful bragging on your spouse. And be careful bragging on yourself. Because it moves you away from God. And any time you get closer to God, the humble you become. Can I shout right there? Say it again, preacher. The closer you get to God, the more humble you are. The more you know of him, the more you experience him, the humbler you become. That's why you got to watch folk that's supposed to be so high up and close to God, and then they can't even speak to you. They don't even look at you, and they walk past you and look down and jeer their, down their nose towards you. Some wrong with that type of maturity. But when you know that you know, y'all listening to me this morning, when you know that you ain't got no business being sitting here in this church. Because when you look over your life just a few days ago, you should have been struck down. But God came in and said, I know they messed up, but I love them so much. And the blood of Jesus is resting upon them. Case dismiss. Is there anybody here online, anywhere, glad that God took your case and took the guiltiness out of it. And that's why braggadocious folks ought not be bragging on how much you got and where you've been because it calls a mirror. Let me give you some, let me give you some patriarchs that had a problem with braggadociousness. Miriam and Aaron, y'all remember them? That's Moses' uh, brother and sister. And then Numbers, the 12th chapter, verse 1, 2, you'll find these words. I think we got it on the screen for you. Miriam and Aaron, verse 1, began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife. That's just another word said, his black wife. What you doing marrying somebody out of your race? For he had married a Cushite. And remember the first part that happened in verse 1, they began to talk against Moses. Yeah, because of the Cushite wife, before he had married a Cushite. Verse 2, and has the Lord spoken only through Moses? That's what they said. Who, who made Moses God? You, you already, you done messed around and gone out of the race. They bragging about the fact that we got Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Well, we got to remember before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there is God. Somebody tried to explain his existence. He always been here. And even before here and being got together, he was there. And when you think about the verse, has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? Hear that word, us? And the Lord heard this. And if you read on down, God said, don't fool with the Moses. Just bring him down to the foot of the mountain. And I'll show them who God is. Braggadocious folk, you might be up right now, but if you keep on hanging on to the momentum because you bragging on your own accomplishments or you bragging the fact that you not like somebody else and you'll have that momentum coming towards you of evil practices. That was another one. Y'all remember Samson? Samson was braggadocious. He may not have appeared to be that way, but he was in a way. In verse uh, 15 and 7 through 17 of chapter 16 of Judges. Chapter 16 of Judges says like this in verse 15. Are y'all tired of me preaching? 
Thank God for that. Then said, she said to him, how can you say I love you when this, this, this is, Mo, this is uh, his wife, she's trying to get hold to him, when you won't confide in me? This is the third time, notice on the line, third time, that you have made a fool of me, she says to Samson, and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. Uh huh. 16. Which, which such nagging, mm, 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 mm. she, mm, 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 mm. with such nagging, she, that's another sermon right there, preacher. Uh, it's with such nagging, I'd rather be on a housetop on a corner than to be around a nagging woman. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the way. Okay. So he says, so her, so, so, so when she nagged, such nagging, she prided him day after day until he was tired to death. And that verse 17 says, so he told her everything. He watch him brag. No razor has ever been used on my head. Mm -hmm. He said, because I have been a Nazarite. Mm -hmm. Set apart to God sent birth. Hit it, hit it, hit it, juggler. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. Braggadocious Samson. And I would become as weak as any other man. <laughs> Is this mic still on? Samson's strength didn't come from his hair. Samson's strength didn't come from his Nazaritism. Samson's strength came from the Lord above. Can I get a witness? All that we do and accomplish in life comes by the Lord's strength. Proverbs said the strength of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. In fact, when we think about that, it is God who enables us. We are not looking at God as a resource. He's the source. When I think about Samson and when you look at it and see what's going on, notice the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler in Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 20 and 22, the rich young ruler in the NIV says, teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Y'all remember that one? All the, I have kept all the, I've done all this. I've crossed every T and I've dotted every I. I've, I've, I've not made mistakes. I kept them things as a child. And watch what Jesus says in verse 21. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Thank God for that. One thing you lack. Uh, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Here it is. 22. At this, the man's face fell. <laughs> he went away sad. Because he had great wealth. Don't brag about how much money you got in the bank. Don't even get caught up on yourself because you all right. Because how many of you know you can be up today and 20 seconds later you can be busted. You, you, you may have a lot of money in the bank. But I'm here to tell you, somebody may hack your account and wipe you out. Don't, don't get braggadocious about your financial condition and position. And, and, and when you find yourself, not only Samson, the rich young ruler, but remember that Jesus has had, Jesus had some disciples. And they got caught up on themselves in Luke, the ninth chapter. In Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 46 through 48. Notice the word NIV says in verse 46, an argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. 
And Lord have mercy. That plagues our churches today. In fact, it, play, it plagues every arena in society, it, even in families. Who is the best? Who's the greatest? Jesus is the greatest. Notice verse 47. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he took, the Bible says, took a little child and made him stand beside him. Back in that day, little children was uh, really just on the Lord totem pole. They ain't care nothing about no little child. And they, they dished women, too. They, they were Jews was up on themselves that if it ain't us, then it, don't, it, it, ain't, it ain't worth fooling with. But look what Jesus does. He goes down and takes the lowest that they have, have contradicted in their mind, the lowest person, and he brings them up. And watch verse 48. Watch, 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 watch what he does to us. He, 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 he simply says, Jesus, knowing there are thousand, verse 47, took a little child and, 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 and had him stand beside him. And here it is. Then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me for he who is least among you all. He is the greatest. Bragging about, Lord, have mercy. Next time when you hear people, don't you fall into the trap of thinking that you all that because you have overcome so much. Can I tell you this morning, I always realized that God didn't have to let me pastor. There are other men that are much profound than I am. And I don't get the big head, but I thank God that things that I've been through help me to be able to be compassionate toward other folks that are going through like manner things. It is a bad example for Christians to get to a high, a, a high lifted up spot that God placed you and forget about giving him the praise rather than draw it to yourself. And you can hear that all across the airwaves. Man, how you get so, well, you know, I went to college and, and I graduated summa cum laude. And, uh, you know, I, I worked 20 hours a day and I saved my monies. Nothing wrong with work, nothing wrong with getting all you can get, and knowledge academic-wise. But my mom used to tell me, she said, when you go down to Alabama State, boy, don't come back here an educated fool. And she explained to me what she meant. Don't you never get so big that you forget about from whence you come. Hello. And when you braggadocious about your accomplishments and you forget about those of others because all of us have come where we come on the shoulders of somebody. Let me say that again. Every last one of us, no matter where you are in the arena of life, you are there because God used somebody to impact your life, to get you to the point where you are. You're not there because you were the greatest. You are there because of God having grace and mercy, visiting you, giving you not what you deserve, but giving you his grace unmerited favor and Paul is writing to these Judaizers and they're thinking that because we have the culture we are Jews we are priests and high priests we don't need no Jesus our salvation has been wrought by us keeping the law and they're braggadocious about keeping the law instead of the lawgiver and so those things are prohibited we are prohibited to be making uh, light come to us. But here we go. Secondly, there are some things that are permissible. And when we think about the permissibility for bragging, thank God that it's all right to brag when your bragging is on him. Amen. <laughs> notice, notice what the scripture said, Jesus. When you bragging about Jesus, you're on the right line. That's all right. You're not prohibited. You are permissed. You have the permission to brag about a Savior, Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 17 and 18, says this, brothers and sisters, that if you're going to brag, make sure you're bragging about Jesus. 
Yeah, Jesus, God's son, Mary's baby, the lamb of God, coming back one day as the lion of Judah. Brag about Jesus, and I'm going to brag about him in a few more moments here. In 2 Corinthians 17, a verse of chapter 10 said, but let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. My God, if I could stand up on this pool, this pulpit and lie and taller on this roster to tell somebody, if you're going to boast, if you're going to be braggadocious, let it be about the Lord. Can I promise you that if you start talking about the one songwriter says, count your blessings, name them one by one. If you if you want to have a full prayer life, getting past them two minutes. Go to bragging about what the Lord has done for you. And when you get through bragging about what he's done for you, revert back and brag about who he is. And I'm telling you, you're talking about hours and hours has gone by. You, you can never run famished when it comes to, that's the wrong word. You can never run dry when, when you are talking about Jesus. Um, a, a good buddy of mine, we were on a convention and, um, and we had been, we, we had gone somewhere and eat and ate some, a bunch of food. I don't know what it was, but it's been so, so long, but we ate, I mean, we were full to the brim. I mean, we had, they, we ate all we were, we had been in, been going to those meetings out and we had to eat. We were eating ourselves. Woo, we were, and I, I lay back on that chair and said, man, I'm famished. And uh, and one of the one of the one of the preachers' wife looked looked didn't say she didn't say nothing at the beginning, but she said, famish. And they saw how I was putting it down. I was like I was like a pack man. I was packing it in. Famish means you still hungry, fool. And I know I wasn't hungry. I was full. What I'm saying to us when you get to talking about Jesus. You can never, ever exhaust communication about Jesus. Just try it one day. Just start talking about him. Just reminisce. Got any Bible knowledge? Just reminisce about him. In fact, I want to give you six of them. He lived without sinning. Aren't you glad that he who knew no sin took on your sin and my sin and the sins of the whole world? I wouldn't, listen, I wouldn't serve a God that was worse than me. No, he, he listen, he did not, he lived every moment on planet earth without sinning. Can I give you a second one that if you get to the point? He, not only that, but, but he taught things that are still valued today. Take up your cross and follow me, he said. He says, when you follow me, you're going to have some opposition. But don't worry about it. I've already overcome. And because I've overcome, so shall you if you follow me. He said, listen, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. Yeah. Whatever burden you got, throw them at my feet. Because when you catch your burdens at my feet, I care for you. He says that I'll never, ever leave you, nor will I forsake you. Boy, has he ever forsaken any of you here today? You, you might have forsaken him, but he never forsaken you. He's always on time. The old folks say he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. His timing is impeccable. And not only did he not sin, but I think about what he taught things that are still valued today. Thirdly, he performed unrivaled miracles. He's a miracle worker. Just cause people, people would say you have reached a pinnacle in life. You at an age that it's over with for you. There'll be nothing else coming out of you. Your womb is dry, dusty, and over with. But can I tell you, it ain't over with until Jesus says it's over with. Anybody know that God can take the lowest of the lowest and put them in a pulpit and preach through them? 
God can take one that has been mistake ridden and bring good things out of him. Y'all ain't talking. Listen, God can perform miracles even when it don't look like it's going to be prosperous. Anybody can tell anybody anywhere that I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. <laughs> but the master heard my cry, tore up from the floor, that's the ebonically, and he lifted us. Man, he's still working miracles. He's a miracle worker. Man, I can talk about how many miracles. You, you know what? You experienced a miracle this morning when you got up and looked in that mirror. And the fact that you used your eyes to look in that mirror, hold up. The fact that you got up, a miracle. Oh, the fact that you realized when you got up that you could get up. The fact that your, your legs were, I don't care if you had canes or hip, yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's a miracle. And here it is that we so oftentimes miss. Even now, a few seconds ago, we inhale and exhale. That's a miracle. Fourthly, he, ex he, we, well, he was accessible to all walks of life. Not to the Jew only. Not to the rich only. But to all. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what, will not, should not perish but have, what, everlasting life. You know that all y'all is all of us, y'all, that he came for the whole world. He's accessible. To everybody, to the Jew, to the Greek, to the Gentile, to the franchise, disenfranchised. Fifthly, this is going to make you shout. When I brag about Jesus, he defeated death. I ain't got no money in my pocket, but I sure need to buy some amens right there because he defeated death. For the wages of sin, death, that separation, spiritually dead, separated from God. The wages of sin is death, not only spiritual separation, but then physical death. Oh, but the gift of God eternal life here it is through who jesus christ some preachers don't wait to, they, they, some people don't even go to the cross but but i thank god for calvary's cross i thank god that jesus hung bled and i thank god that he died because what he did his death satisfied the father and our sin debt was paid in full when he rose that third day morning and because he lives man i ain't worried about no death i ain't ready to go right now when i say i got some more living i want to do but if by chance i know to be absent from this body is to be present with the lord one day one glad morning when this life over i ain't flying into eternity without christ i'm going to where he is i'm going up yonder all because jesus destroyed death death where is your sting? Grave! Where is your victory? He done removed the sting of death. And the grave couldn't hold him down. And you talking about you need a song that calls you to shout when Jesus has gotten in your place and said that Willie should have been dead. But I'm going to give him life eternally with me because he trusts me. He asked me to come into his life and he received me by faith. How many of y'all saved? Okay, good. I see. Okay. And how many of you know you saved 
and you never seen Jesus in the flesh. But you raise your hand and say you're saved because you didn't have to see him. You believe what the word said. Can I get somebody? And I ain't got to see it. That's why you need to understand that you didn't have to see Jesus to be saved. You don't have to see Jesus to know that that rock that's placed in your way, that God can do some things with that. He can either take you over it, under it, around it, through it. <laughs> What you're going through is not hard for God. There's nothing too hard for him. You don't have to see the end. Know that he's already made a way for all of us. That's where you get your shouting on. That's where you get your praise on. That's when you brag. If you're going to brag about that, I was deeply sinking in sin. And God, thanks be to him, saved us through his son, Jesus Christ. But then not only brag about Jesus, you ought to start off with that, but then also brag about your mentors. This is the, this is the permissibility of braggadociousness. Make Jesus your bragging rights. But then others who have mentored you. So we so quickly uh, forget about those who have, who have given us insight. In fact, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, says it in verse 12 and 13, says, Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, mm -hmm. who are over you in the Lord. And that ain't just pastors only now. And who admonish uh -oh, you. Hold them in highest regard. We pray on Thursday, and then one of our deacons talking about I hold you, I hold you in highest esteem. Talking about the Lord Jesus, he always say that. It just blow my mind when you be saying that, because that's a good thing. He says, hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Think about those who have impacted your life. You can start anywhere, but it ought to be able to start at, at home. I'm my, I'm my mama and daddy in how I live life because they impact me. I've had, listen, I've had some, some Sunday school teachers that, that impacted my life when I was a little boy. We had a lady, uh, Rem Johnson, know about her name, Miss Bessie. Miss Bessie, uh, uh, she would give tea cakes if you would come. What we had to do, kind of cut a grass, some of a sweep? Miss Bessie just make a whole bag of tea cakes. I know some of you millennials talking about, what, who, tea cakes? Yeah, tea cakes, and for you who are online, tea cakes, they would take in and make cookies. They would, but they would, they would call them tea cakes because they probably were best when you drank tea and eat cakes. I don't know, but anyway, she would do a whole bag of tea cakes. I'm going to tell on Rem Johnson. Rem Johnson didn't quite want Miss Bessie tea cake because Miss Bessie wasn't quite the cleanest. So she give him money. So money, don't worry about it, even if it's dirty, it's spin. And she impacted our lives. You think about those who have impacted your life. You heard me preaching earlier. You didn't get where you are because of you. Somebody laid down some principles in your life that told you, don't do this. I've been there. I done messed up. You don't have to go through what I've gone through. You don't have to do that. I've already, listen, I'm letting you know that, listen, you, that's a better way. Think about those persons who have impacted your life, your school teachers that were hard on you. Because Thessalonians said that you have to even admonish those who have gone wrong. That means that if you love, you're going to correct. You do it out of love. Just think about folks that have impacted you. I'm a musician, and I never forget the run chat is. When they, when they took me and, and, and taught me what instrument, and they put me two or three instruments, and they found out which one I was pretty much comfortable with. I went through the saxophone. I went through the trombone. Man, I, went, I ended up with the trumpet. 
and they would take me when school was over with at, at, at uh, Kennedy Elementary School. And they would they'd get the permission from my mom and say, we want to take Willie and uh, we're going to go buy him some, some lunch and then we're going to come back and teach him rudiments. And the Ranchettis, Italian husband and wife music uh, teachers at, at that place called Kennedy. And can I tell you, every moment I thought about it, and I hated that I didn't get a chance to attend their funeral. But what I did, every time I went to, to audition for a part or whatever, I always talked about the Ranchettis. How I'm what I am as a musician because of the Ranchettis. We went to Woodlawn High School and they end up being down there, becoming the band directors down there for a moment. You think about those people. You don't have to have been a, a musician. Maybe, maybe you are a nurse. Maybe you're an entrepreneur now because somebody modeled before you. Braggadocious. You're going to stop bragging on yourself. Let other folks brag on you. But you brag on what other folks have done for you. Don't be bragging on yourself. Let the Lord brag on you. Because when God brags on you, EF Hutton, everybody listens. Can I get a witness? Brag on Jesus. It's permissible. Brag on your, co your fellow workers. And then let me give you a third one. Since we can be braggadocious in this regard. Brag on other Christian followers. Amen. That's so strong right there. Listen, thank God that you're listening to good preaching and good pastoral leadership. But don't go out there and then forget about it. So many people get on the great leaders of pastors and teachers and preachers. And, and then they, they, you act like, they, they act like I've been this way all my days. You need, to, you need to remember other Christ followers. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 15 through 16 says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. You know what Paul is saying? He's remembering those that came up with him. He's remembering, remembering them who walked with him. Can I tell you, this ministry is not imbued and, and, and not empowered by Willie Wells, Jr. We are empowered by Christ Jesus. I just happen to be the pastor with an open door policy that whosoever will and whatever God gives you in a gift, I want you to help me to help this community so that the kingdom of God can be enlarged. This ain't about no Willie Wells. It ain't about no pastor. You don't talk about who's the best pastor. Is it a Paul? Is it Apollo? Paul said, no. All of us are, we need one another. Now, notice what he says. I have, in verse 16, he says, I have stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. In Philippians, the first chapter, verse 3 through 6. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I just can only talk about me, those Christian followers, other ones. I think about Reverend Hale, who is with the Lord now. And he said to me that I'll never forget. He says, Willie, now that you started preaching, he says, let me say, share this with you. You don't have to go through every experience in life that there is to learn. He said, you can learn from other folks' mistakes. And that sticks with me today. If it's a hole out on, four, on, oh, out on uh, 52nd and everybody falling in it, duh. If we see that people are leaving God to go to something else and it doesn't work out for them, any questions? 
Colossians, the first chapter, verse 2, 3, and 4, the NIV says, To the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Watch Paul brag about the other Christian followers. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints. Can I tell you, when you do what you do in church and folks are impacting your life powerfully, positively, thank God for them. Brag about them instead of fussing about them. Can I give you one last scripture in this, this particular pericomy? In 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 2, 3, 4, and 5, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father in Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God when I, whom I serve as my forefather did. With a clear conscience, and as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Last verse. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which had first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. Other folks, don't wait till the people die and go tell me, so I sure thank little Bobo. Bobo really made it right for me. Let Bobo know why he alive, that you appreciate him. Brag about how they got in your way and pointed you right. And so it is prohibited to brag about yourself. It is permissible to brag about Jesus, amen, and about other fellow Christians and then co-workers. And then finally, that's a preference. And then we'll be done preaching here today. Can't believe I'm going to be through before 1230. Not. The preference over bragging. What's the preference over bragging? Here it is. Here's the whole deal about chapter 3 that Paul is writing. He says, listen, y'all Judaizers, y'all are bragging about your, your salvation is predicated upon your religious belief, which is, which is really bad. Because Judaism won't save you. It'll send you to hell. Why? Because Jesus is not in it. But what I need you to know, that when you follow Christ, it's a faith fellowship. It's not no hoping. It's not no wishing. If you follow him, he will never, ever leave you. When I think about that, the preference over bragging, faith excludes boasting. And the 27th verse tells us this in Romans 3, where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. That's why God don't pick have picks and chooses. He loves everybody. And if you have faith to believe him, God will save you. Man, when you think about Romans 10, 9, it just said that all you need to do is believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down and died for you. Believe that he rose that you might have life. And that's all you need to know. By faith, receive his finished work. And you will be saved. Not on your accomplishments and not on your perseverance, but on Christ, the solid rock I stay in. And when I think about that, faith justifies a man without the works of the law. 
Yeah, that takes out this thing. You trying to work to be saved and work to stay saved. No, I'm saved because my faith in Christ. And you can't snatch me from him because my faith has sealed me in Jesus Christ. Romans, the 28th verse, chapter 3 says, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. God looks at us because we have accepted Jesus by faith, and he looks as, at us as though we never sinned. Ain't that a good look? All because of Jesus, and not us. And that's where we rest on our salvation. That's why we can shout when the bills are not paid. That's why we can shout when the doctor said, I ain't nothing else I can do. That's why we can shout, shout to the glory of God when the children ain't acting right. That's why we can shout when the economy seems to be going bad. It's getting worse. That's why we can shout when it's raining in, spe in spite of the sunshine on the other side. We can shout because our hope is in him by faith. And now finally, faith reveals only one God who deals with all equally. He's not a prejudiced God. Romans the 29th and 30th verse says in chapter 3, said, is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? And we can ask, ask, we can ask those, answer those questions now. No, he's, he's not only the God of the Jews, because I'm not a Jew. But I'm, I'm, listen, I'm a, I'm a Gentile now saved, and he's engrafted me into the body of Christ. Thank God that he saved me. If he can save me, he can save anybody. Whether your hair is kinky or curly, straight or nappy, he can save you because it ain't your body he's saving. It's your soul that he's going to save. Can I get a witness? When we think about what he says there in verse 30, it says, since there is only one God, yeah, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Even if you mess up, God will fix you up. And finally, faith upholds and establish the law. Faith. And the 31st verse says, do we then nullify the law by, by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the the law. Braggadocious. It's prohibited for you to brag on yourself. It is permissible for you to brag on those who have helped you and shown up those followers that are in the labor of God. I'm going to close today and I'm going to tell you that Jesus Christ Son of God the bright and morning star. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. Battle axe in times of war. Bridge over troubled water. Peace in the midst of a storm. Joy in times of sorrow. When your heart is heavy, he can lighten it. When your way is dark, he can light it. When your mind is confused, he can remove perplexity. When the enemy fights against you, he becomes your rod. He becomes your shelter. He becomes your hiding place. He becomes your place to abode where no one can touch you. When you made a mistake, he's standing at your doorway. And he says, I know you messed up. Fail. But I love you so much that if you would have been the only one, I still would have come. Because I love you so much that while you were yet dead in your trespasses and sin, 
Jesus said, I came down for the two generations. <laughs> and they took me from judgment hall to judgment hall. They beat me all night thirsty, slapped me, spit on me, took my clothes off and put some tattered, nasty, throwaway clothes on me. Socked me in the face and slapped me on the back and made fun and toyed with me. Took a crown of thorns, flattered them and pressed them down on my skull. And I didn't say a mumbling word because I came to be bruised so I can set the captives free. Yeah, they beat me up. Don't brag about anything. I know you've been through some things. I know you had some good days and some bad days. I know you had some highs and some lows. But you got to remember what I've gone through. I stood there thirsty. They took their fingers one by one, pulled the hairs of my beard out of my face, and I didn't say a mumbling word. I stood there. All of those who had followed me, all of those who I had set free, they left me. But I hung on. And if not to add insult to injuries, I was beaten. I was, I was crucified before even being crucified. They pulled the flesh off my back. And I was bleeding profusely. But I didn't say a mumbling word. They slapped me, they kicked me, they spat on me. But I stood there. Because I didn't see them. I saw you. I saw you. I, I, saw, I saw you. I saw you being kicked out. I saw how they stuck in the doorway and said, you can't come in. And I saw how they, you meant to be. Your qualification was there. But because of your skin color, they rejected you. I saw you. They plucked the hands out of my face. And I stood there. Because I knew I was going to carry out the will of the Father. And on Friday, bloody, beaten beyond recognition, they put a cross on my shoulder. And it was hard, but I kept marching. Jesus! Why did you keep on marching? Because I saw you. 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 I died to the moon ran down in blood. I died until the dog got confused. I died until the sun refused to shine. But I didn't stay dead. Why you didn't stay dead, Jesus? I didn't stay dead because I saw y'all. And I know it wasn't finished until I got up. And my father reached down. And he reached down and woke me up that third day morning. And I got up with all power, heaven and earth in my hand. And one third morning, when this life is over, I'm going to be all right. Because my hope ain't in the law. My hope is in the law giver. I'm not concerned about what they're doing on the outside because can't nobody pluck me out of the 
hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through, know that your living is not in vain <laughs> when it's in the Lord. Can I get a witness here? So if you're going to brag about somebody, brag about Jesus Christ, the J-E-S-U-S, the bright and morning star, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, that one that gives you strength in times of weakness, Jesus Christ, my elder brother, my heaven Lord sharer, my burden bearer, my wheel in the middle of the wheel, my everything. tried it for myself and I know he's all right so if you're gonna brag about anything brag about Jesus Christ who came and fulfilled the law and all of chapter 3 says to us don't worry about that law praise the law giver who stood and took what you and I should have taken and could not take he did it for us that's what we get our shout on today so I'm going to ask the question, how many of y'all know him by yourself? Is there anybody ashamed of him that you know him? And as a result, if you're not in Christ Jesus, you can get that today. All you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, it's me. It is me. I'm torn from the floor. I've made mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I know that I tried to change from doing this. I, I tried to do what other folks said, but God, I just, I, I can't do it by myself. And God says, that's what I want you to say. But I believe your son, Jesus Christ, came in my place. And on that premise, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me by your grace. The Bible says when he does that, you shout to the glory of God. It was the Lord Jesus. It is the Lord Jesus. It is Jesus in my life. Clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you for that. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask that our preachers will come up just for a moment and if you're able to remain standing maybe you don't know who he is I want to invite you and that's the first point of business here today that you know who Jesus is you may have been braggadocious about the groups that you've been in and the places that you've traveled but God wants you to change your braggadocious ways he don't want you to start bragging he just wants you to start bragging about him when you do that Somebody else would ask, what must I do to be saved? And they'll come running asking that. And if you're not saved, that's an opportunity today. Maybe you're online. Maybe you're in the presence of uh, these Christians. Uh, you can get saved today. Just believe and by faith receive. Then if you maybe, secondly, maybe you're here and there are some things in your life. Maybe you... You messed up. You know you've been saved, but somehow life just kicked you so hard and you just got out of the way. Can I tell you, God didn't leave you, and he's right where you left him. 
and you can be restored. Aren't you glad about that? And amen, amen. And if you need a church home, I believe that our church is a mighty good place. It's not the only good place, but it's one of the good places because Jesus resides here. He's, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the rock of salvation. And so as you do those three positions, please accept it. I want to pray for us. Father, we thank you today, Lord, and we ask that you would um, not only take this word and, and, and build us up with it, but God, help us to be able to take this same word and go brag to this world that is bragging so much about itself. Help us, Lord, to become braggadocious about you. For it is you that we live and we move and we have our being. It is you that declare us more than conquerors. It is you that even through the crucibles of life hitting us left and right, that you give us that peace, that safety, that joy, that security. Then, Father, I pray now those who maybe need to make them a choice, Lord, to follow you, even after having left you, that they will come back to you. And then, Lord, you will give them that peace that they need. We don't know when you're coming back, but we know one day you will. But until you do, Lord, we're going to occupy. That means we're going to be telling our story. We're going to be bragging about our Savior. We love you and we honor you. If you didn't do anything else, you've already done enough. You saved us and we're thankful for that. To that end, God, we glorify your name. It is in Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. May you be seated in a minute more here. We want to talk to you about sal salvation has already been rendered. Now that's a time that after hearing the word of God, that is a time that we go in and we do of our tithes and offerings. And it's not one of those things where it's compulsion. You don't do it because somebody making you do it. Or you, you don't really do it because somebody asks you to do it. You do it because you love the Lord. Last week we had a power outage. And there was no power in this building whatsoever. And a couple of the men and the workers, a bunch of us came out here and we were hoping that power would come back on, but it didn't. And uh, to those of you who watched online, you had to end up watching a uh, past service, but you were able to go and have church in that regard. And if God, I don't care how many times you hear a sermon, if it's God's sermon, it, it'll be good each time. And uh, so thank you for that. And last week you did do exceptionally well. Uh, you gave, and those who uh, didn't get a chance to come to the place, they usually come in and be in person with us, but you gave. And uh, thank God for that. Now, there may be those who didn't give because you thought since the power was off, then that means that, okay, then we had a free Sunday. Like people think that fifth Sunday in this month, that's free Sunday. That ain't, we just got one, two, three, four, and that's it. No, every time, every day, every moment, we are accountable uh, for it. Amen. So, if you you who didn't, who had a desire to give last week and didn't do it, now, what you did, what, what you're going to do for last week is not going to, Substitute for you what you need to do for this week. You know, we don't do no begging and we're not arrogant about it. God blesses our church and keeps it going as a result of us being faithful to him. And uh, when we are faithful to him, God shown up rewards our church. And all of us who have been part of this church know that that's certain. And so I just want to invite you to uh, those who have already given, thank you for that. And those who need to give at the conclusion of the service, our ushers will hear. And uh, when we get ready to uh, recess, they are going to give you an opportunity as you exit. There's a way you can go and put your tithes and offerings. And then those of our guests who are here, again, we don't ask you to do nothing but whatever God will tell you to do. And uh, you, that's up to you. We don't go beating you up and just talking about you got to do this. Or if you got a church home and you've been going there, that's your responsibility at that church home. But if God push on your heart to do something here, okay, just go and do it. I do know one thing, whatever you do for the Lord won't never, ever be kept in the dark. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Amen. So let's take a moment and thank God for uh, these tithes and offerings and ask God's blessings upon them. Father, we thank you today, Lord, as we come. And Lord, we thank you that we can brag about you, how much you love us and how much you do for us and just about who you are. 
we come now, God, to give uh, to you those uh, those things that would. Psalms 24 says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. God, we brag on you and we come now not lifting ourselves up for everything that you've given us, Lord. It comes from you. And so now, Lord, we return to you. We're just caretakers of it and we give back to you. Press it down now and shake it together and roll it over and, and pour into our bosom that we be even more obedient as we give to others. Now, Lord, I pray now that you would take these uh, these symbols of our love and, and God, that you would uh, magnify. You've already shown us how faithful you are as we receive it, Lord. We ask your blessings upon those who will give faithfully, realizing, Lord, that you've already made a way for us. We love you and we honor you today now. As we pray, God, we ask that you will remember what you've done for us, most importantly, that you gave us the very best in your son, Jesus Christ, who didn't shortcut us. But he stood the test of time, the suffering, the abuse. He stood there anyhow because he loved us. And so, God, help us to do this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Shout amen. 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 God bless your heart. Continue to pray, if you will, for the Wells slash uh, McQueen family, and there may be others. I saw um, uh, Catrice, not Catrice, Sharice was here today, and I saw her. She sits down, and uh, she's like a Timex watch. She keeps on getting a licking, but she keeps on ticking, and so keep on praying for that, and there's some others that are going through things within our own congregation, and then maybe you have some family members and friends that are going through things. Just keep keep your prayer wheel turning. Amen. If you will, look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad today that I can brag. I just need to know who I'm bragging about. Tell your neighbor, I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. We stand on your feet. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and now forevermore. Shout with me. Amen. Come on one more time. Lastly, amen. All right, ushers, will you prepare? If you happen to be on uh, my right side, you will be in section four. Section four.